Madam President, here we are following the uh, Thanksgiving holiday where I hope that uh, people got to get together with friends and family and enjoy a little respite from the hectic schedule here in Congress. But here we are now uh, with just a few short days intervening between now and Christmas and the end of the year legislative mad dash is officially upon us. This year, our Democratic colleagues who control the Senate agenda have ignored some of the Senate's most important and basic responsibilities, leaving us with a whole lot to do and not a whole lot of time in which to do it. In September, when the Senate should have passed a group of bills to fund the government for the next fiscal year, our colleagues instead kicked the can down the road. You would have thought they would have used the past couple of months to pass the annual appropriation bills, which was one of the most basic and fundamental responsibilities of Congress. But no, they chose not to do that. Instead, our Democratic colleagues found time for partisan, dead-on-arrival messaging bills while they failed to bring a single appropriations bill to the floor with the December the 3rd deadline. As things stand today, it looks like these funding bills are nowhere near ready. This risks leaving millions of Americans without a paycheck right before the Christmas holidays or punting on our funding responsibilities once again. And that's not the only potential fiscal disaster we are careening toward. At some point in the coming days, weeks, or months, we don't know exactly when, only Secretary Yellen knows, the U.S. will run up against the debt limit. That is, we've maxed out our credit card, and unless our Democratic colleagues decide to raise that credit limit, we will exhaust the credit of the United States government. It kind of feels a little like Groundhog Day because we saw this movie just a about two months ago. Democrats had a clear roadmap and ample time to increase the debt ceiling on their own and avoid a financial crisis, but they stubbornly refused. They said they didn't have enough time. Well, they don't have that excuse now. And even then, they knew since July that Republicans would not help them with, their, with another partisan spending spree. So we find ourselves staring down the barrel of a potential economic crisis, but our colleagues can't blame the calendar or not having enough time again. If our Democratic colleagues want to exclude Republicans and continue spending on a purely partisan basis, they will have to raise the debt ceiling in a partisan fashion. They've proven they're okay with spending trillions of dollars of borrowed money without a single Republican vote. It's not too much to say that they should be held accountable for that reckless course of conduct. Of course, before the Senate addresses either one of those crises, there's another item on the agenda, the National Defense Authorization Act. Congress has passed the National Defense Authorization Act each year for the last 60 years, and for good reason. It's the case, I believe, that our national security is the single most important duty that we have here in, in the Senate. But this bill has been waiting in the wings for months, ready for floor action. And both the chairman of the Armed Services Committee and the ranking member have had to push the majority leader to actually bring this to the Senate floor, even at this late date. So two weeks ago, before the Thanksgiving holidays, the Senate finally began consideration of the Defense Authorization Act. And we hope we can actually do what the Senate's supposed to do, which is to vote on amendments to that bill and then pass it in the coming days. But the fact is, it's nearly December. And, and uh, it has been, the fact that it has not been done yet is simply inexplicable. Now, with such a big to-do list, and so little time to do it, you'd think our colleagues would be laser focused on this hefty end of the year agenda. Funding the government, avoiding a debt crisis, strengthening our military, and supporting our volunteer military forces and their family. 
None of the Senate's most basic responsibilities have been attended to. And as it stands today, the Senate is only scheduled to be in session for a handful of days before the Christmas holidays. Well, unfortunately, our Democratic colleagues think they have an even more important job to do. Forget the millions of government employees who could be left without a paycheck before the holidays or the economic crisis that will cripple our country if we defaulted on our debt. Our Democratic colleagues are laser focused on their multi-trillion dollar tax and spending spree. After months of party infighting and countless iterations of this bill, the Democratic leaders in the House, most notably Speaker Pelosi, finally managed to pass a partisan vision, version of this bill. They couldn't even convince every Democrat to vote for the bill, which is an indication of how problematic it is. What we're talking about is an absolutely massive bill that would increase the role and power of the federal government in Americans' lives in an unprecedented fashion. It would reshape how we take care of our children, our health care system, our energy, our educational systems. Virtually every aspect of American citizens' daily lives would be affected by this, by this monstrosity. And of course, these programs don't come cheap. But Democrats have pulled every gimmick in the book to hide the true cost. They filled this bill with arbitrary sunsets and cliffs and expirations that make these programs appear to cost less than we know they actually will. One example is the expanded child tax credit. As originally drafted, this policy was a temporary measure in their bill that became law in March just eight months ago. Earlier drafts of the so-called Build Back Better legislation would have extended that policy through 2025, even though it seemed all but certain that Democrats would later try to make, make it permanent. When Democrats needed to cut the overall price tag of the bill to convince their own members to vote for it, the expanded child tax credit was scaled back to a one-year extension. But nothing's really changed. I have no expectation that this or a number of other so-called temporary programs in this bill will actually expire. As President Ronald Reagan once famously said, the closest thing to eternal life on Earth is a temporary government program. If all the temporary provisions in this bill are made permanent, it will cost a whole lot more than is advertised. And the budget experts at the University of Pennsylvania's Wharton School of Business have given us an estimate of how much more it will cost. Of course, there's President Biden who said it will cost zero. Nobody believes that. Others have said, well, it's a $1.75 trillion bill. And I would argue that based on all the budget gimmickry, you can't really believe that either. The University of Pennsylvania Wharton School of Business pegs the price at close to $4.6 trillion over 10 years. That's the budget window, more than two and a half times the amount Democrats have previously stated. The Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget agrees with that estimate. They estimate that the true cost of this bill would be approximately $5 trillion over the next 10 years. That's $5 trillion in largely borrowed money that will be have, to have to be paid back by somebody. That's a whole lot more than the $1.75 trillion price tag that the press has reported based on the incredible estimates that our Democratic colleagues have provided. Of course, that flies in the face of President Biden's estimate that it would cost nothing. Well, again, we understand that is not true. And the $1.75 trillion price tag is not true either. Last week, I sent a letter to the leaders of the Congressional Budget Office and the Joint Committee on Taxation requesting a true cost estimate for this bill. <clears throat> the American people deserve a full and complete picture of the real world price of this legislation. And before voting on the bill, every member of the Senate both Republicans and Democrats should want to know how much this legislation is going to end up costing the American people. The price tag of this bill is deeply 
concerning. But that's only part of what makes this legislation so dangerous. As I said earlier, it dramatically increases the role of the federal government in every aspect of our lives. It drives up taxes on working families. It harms our energy security. And it hurts our competitiveness on the global stage, which hands a big win to China. That apparently is the priority for our Democratic colleagues right now. Not the looming debt crisis or potential government shutdown. They're focused on legislation that actually does more harm than good. Our Democratic colleagues control the Senate agenda. They control the House and they control the White House. They control every lever in the legislative process here in Washington, D.C. And this is how they've chosen, chosen to use that power. Our Democratic colleagues, colleagues continue to prove that they are not doing what's best for the American people. If it was, then there would be an effort to build a bipartisan consensus for this legislation. Instead, they're using raw, partisan political power to jam through an agenda that they know will end up costing somewhere around $5 trillion and that will permanently alter the relationship of the American people to the federal government. For our country's sake, I hope something changes between now and the time we actually take up this partisan tax and spending spree bill that's been passed by the House of Representatives. I yield the floor.